Hello my soccer universe and welcome to the weekly roundup of the league uh, standings if you want and the results that happened uh, over the last weekend. Um, for now I'm gonna just give you my thoughts on the games and the results and how the table stands and all that kind of stuff but I plan that uh, just before the international break that I'm also gonna include um, some percentages of, of winning how are we as compared to the beginning of the season? That's at least the plan. Let's see how it will go. Uh, and let's dive right in. I am wearing Liverpool because there were three teams, and we'll talk about them, that I considered wearing, but probably Liverpool had the uh, most impressive result. I'll let you be the judge of that, but you know, they were the one that were in a true uh, top of the table clash, at least from name. It was not from the game uh but yeah i'm already talking a lot um the premier league started on friday with aston villa beating everton 2-0 a uh, pretty big win for aston villa i have gotta say uh everton you know on one side i have a feeling that everton could be on the uh breakthrough on top but then they produce results like this so that's not all that great uh, Norwich City loses home to Chelsea 2-3 so Chelsea finally gets their first win um, it was hard work but in the end I think the more uh, experienced side uh, shone through Southampton gets a 2-0 win at Brighton then the first shocker of the weekend uh, Manchester United losing to Crystal Palace 1-2 uh, a game that United basically uh, dominated however they went down by a by goal, then they got a penalty, and given the whole backstory over the last weekend, where Pogba took a, a penalty away from Rashford, well, took away, he said, oh, he, he's, he's gonna take it, and it was saved. Then, um, you know, everyone got on their case, especially on Pogba and what a weak manager, Solskjaer is, blah, 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 blah. Rashford is the penalty taker, he steps up and hits the bar. Uh, and I think then it goes uh, even, uh, no, the post, and then it goes out. United get a late equalizer, and everyone thinks, yes, at least a point. Maybe we can go for three. Now it was Crystal Palace, and that's the first stroker of the weekend. Palace beating United by a score of two goals to one. Sheffield United loses at home to uh, Leicester City by the same scoreline, eh, also 2-1 to one for Leicester City. West Ham against Watford. Watford is having a rough patch uh, to start off the season, I gotta say. Um, I, did not ex I did not see that coming at the moment. Watford is a team in trouble. 3-1 uh, to West Ham. And then the big clash that I talked about, Liverpool-Arsenal. Uh, from the name, this is a huge game, uh, but did anyone expect Arsenal to do anything there, uh, given their defensive frailties? I don't think so. Arsenal actually had sort of a plan that, uh, of course, backfired, because they don't have the means to stop the high press of Liverpool, uh, especially since the high press was already giving them trouble against Burnley, and Liverpool is the master of that. So um, it was only a matter of time until goals were scored. And in the end, um, I think um, Salah got uh, two and the deadlock was broken by Matip exactly after a corner kick. Salah got a penalty in the 49th and then again Salah in the 58th. Torreira only uh, pulls one back late in the game, but I think at that point Liverpool actually, I don't want to say stopped playing, but didn't take it as serious anymore because it was really clear who is getting the three points in that one. Uh, most notably for me was I expected Arsenal to play in yellow and not in navy. I like those navy jerseys but I think this is dark against dark. Um, was I didn't feel as happy with that matchup. Although I really like those navy jerseys. If you see my Premier League review uh, you surely know that I'm a big fan of those. Uh, then on Sunday, uh, Bournemouth loses home to Manchester City. Well, it was bound that Manchester City gets that win. And then the second shocker, Newcastle, uh, through record signing Joel Linton, uh, who I actually know because two years ago he still played uh, for uh, Rapid. So he is at least here in Austria known commodity. And of course, all the newspapers, former Rapid player helps um, Newcastle win over Tottenham. Um, that is clearly a shocker. And then what uh, Wolves against Burnley also 1-1. Uh, you know, 
given last season, I would not have expected that. But you know, it's early, early in the season. Teams need to find themselves. We still need to judge, and uh, especially the Leicester Wolves, uh, Everton, maybe Watford. Those are really hard to uh, to judge for now. In what order will they be? Um, I would say Leicester is probably the best one of those. So in the table now we have Liverpool, uh, perfect start, three out of three uh, wins. City, if they don't drop the points against Spurs, uh, completely, I don't want to say controversially unnecessary, they should have backed those points. I mean, this was a freak result from Spurs. They are now sitting second, otherwise they would also would have a perfect start. Arsenal, uh, six. You're still in third place. Then Leicester 5, United 4, Burnley 4, Spurs 4, Brighton 4, Sheffield 4. It's a big, thick midfield. Uh, Palace 4, Bournemouth 4, Everton 4, Chelsea 4, Hammers 4. And then we get the, the small pack of teams that have not had that great of a start. Uh, for Wolves, I would say this is true. A Villa Norwich, I think that they already have their win in is, is good. They might get some more. Southampton has only three points. Newcastle has three points. And Watford is winless at the table. So uh, there is already a little bit of a distance. Let's go on and move to the Bundesliga. I kind of made this whole trip here um, where I talked about it in my video yesterday Borussia Dortmund gets an early win against Köln 3-1 then uh, Mainz Gladbach 1-3 Augsburg Union 1-1 um, that's actually an interesting one because I think both of these teams are probably more towards the bottom of the table uh, Düsseldorf loses at home to Leverkusen 3-1 uh, Paderborn Freiburg also 1-3 not entirely unexpected. Hoffenheim gets a decent start with a 3-2 over Bremen. And then Lewandowski continues his crazy scoring streak by uh, beating Schalke more or less or by himself. 3-0. The other, or probably the big game of the week was Leipzig against Frankfurt, where Leipzig gets um, 2-1 win that was never really in danger, I would say. Uh, and then Hertha um, loses at home to Wolfsburg 3-0. I mean, they just got the points at Bayern and then you lose uh, to Wolfsburg. Of course, I know the Wolfsburg coach very intimately because for the past four years he's been the last coach. And there are quite a few last players, former last players up there as well. So um, I actually expect Wolfsburg to do a pretty decent job. So let's see how they will continue. I'm um, not going to say much about the jerseys, uh, for that I wanted to watch my Bundesliga review, which will be coming up this week. So on the table, uh, perfect starts for uh, one, two, three, four, five teams. Dortmund, Leipzig, Freiburg, Wolfsburg, Leverkusen. I think except for Freiburg, uh, all of those are not unexpected. Bayern has four points, Gladbach has four, then Düsseldorf, uh, Hoffenheim and Frankfurt with three. So one win, one loss. Uh, Hertha, the sole point against Bayern. Schalke, one point. Augsburg, uh, Union, one point. And then uh, still winless, Paderborn, Bremen, Köln. And Mainz, well, at least two names in there that I don't want to see in there, that's Bremen and Köln. But after only two matches, we cannot say much. Um, speaking of Bundesliga, uh, I have been talking a lot about the Austrian Bundesliga because I'm so crazy about Lask. So let's look at this week's results as well and then quickly more or less at the standings. Uh, Wolfsberg, uh, this small team from Kärnten that's actually finished now third, will play in the Europa League, so get familiar with them, uh, beat Alltag 5-2. They are in a free scoring form to be honest. Then the big uh, game of the week was Rapid Wien against Lask. 2-1 for Lask. I'm over the moon. If you want to get watch my video from yesterday, this is a huge result for, for Lask because, I mean, that's a win at the biggest team in Austria. Last minute win. I hope this gives them enough energy to go into Bruges and maybe get the same result. St. Pölten wins 1-0 at Mattersburg. Mattersburg has been in free fall. St. Pölten is not all that of a great team, so this was basically uh, pretty bad. Uh, matchup overall. Uh, Hartberg Austria Wien looks like a crazy result for Hartberg, but Hartberg had a good start to the season. Austria Wien is, of course, complaining about the referee because there was a goal not given. That, yeah, I think it's contentious. 
Free scoring from Salzburg. Salzburg is scoring, 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 scoring goals. 5-0 against Ad Admira. And then Sturm gets another uh, win. They have a so-and-so start. 2-0 against Swarovski Tirol. This is not Innsbruck. This is Wattens that uh, is now run by the Swarovski family because the Swarovski company has its seat in Wattens and they are uh, financing basically Wattens now. And in order to kind of piss a little bit on Innsbruck's uh, doorstep, yeah, let's call ourselves Tirol. Swarovski Tirol is a brand. We know this from the 90s, but this is not the same team. So in the standings, it's basically more or less how it was last season. Salzburg ahead, five wins out of five. Lusk only drop points at home to Swarovski Tirol. Uh, a game they should have won, to be honest. So those two teams that were already the top teams last season are still on top. And for Lusk, it's pretty amazing because for three games, they did not play the first team squad uh, because of the uh, European competition. Uh, Wolfsberg, Sturm, yeah, nine points each. Wolfsberg is, as I said, a free scoring form, so uh, that's dangerous, and Lask is playing Wolfsberg uh, this Saturday. Uh, Hartberg, eight, so there's two Styrian teams close to each other, Sturm and Hartberg. Then the two big boys from Vienna who play each other this weekend, which of course is the game of the weekend. Uh, Rapid and Austria, seven and five. Swarovski has already five, St. Burton five, Arctic four. Matosburg 3 and Admira 1. I think it's between Matos and uh, Matosburg and Admira going down. But you know, it's still early in the season. To Italy we go. Boy, was it a, a crazy start to Serie A season, to say the least. Um, but for me, not very satisfying overall. We have Juve winning against Parma. I talked about it. Uh, Juve... Got a, the win through Chiellini, uh, Ronaldo scored a goal, it was a chalk off for offside and blah blah blah, they had more chances. Then it was only 1-0, it was a little bit disappointing. Then the huge clash, Fiorentina-Napoli 3-4 and I misspoke, the really wonderful goal. I mean there are quite a few nice goals in there, but the really wonderful is the fourth, the winner for Napoli. I really like the third throw, the winner for Napoli, um, Mertens, Kajakan in uh, cross to um, Insigne, who had it in, and the commentator here said, where other people would take the knee, he takes the head, because he's so small. Uh, absolutely amazing game, one that you can watch on repeat. It was just great to watch. Udine Milan, 1-0. Uh, the less I say about Milan, the better. Cagliari loses at home to Brescia. So Brescia is back with, with a win. That was not expected to me. R uh, same goes for Roma against Genoa, where Roma had three times the lead. Genoa uh, three times equalizes because they only manage... With four shots, they get three goals. So uh, I think the Roma defense, that will be a talking point this season. Spal Atalanta 2-3, so the sensation from last season also gets off to a winning start. Lazio with a pretty emphatic 3-0 against Sampdoria. That is uh, is un uh, unexpected, to be honest. Torino 2-1 over Sassuolo. And Verona is also back uh, in Serie A and starts with a point against Bologna. And then yesterday, Inter 4-0 over another promoted side, uh, Lecce. Lecce played quite nicely at the beginning. But then uh, Inter really took over um, the goals, I think, were scored by Brozovic, who got uh, the first one, a really nice shot. Shortly thereafter, Sensi makes it 2-0, uh, Lukaku, um, you know, dusts one off for 4-0, and then Kantareva in the, um, in the 84th gets the win. Those jerseys I still don't like, but Inter gets off to a great start. Um, and leads Serie A. I don't want to go through the table now because, you know, after the first day you see on the results, you can already make your own picture. But the first leader is Inter, and I was actually thinking of potentially wearing Inter jersey, despite my absolute... Inter is one of those teams I really do not like. Milan fan. So, as I say about Milan, the better. Um, quickly, France. I uh, have not seen much. Amiens not 1-2. Angers Metz 3-0. Brest Reims 1-0. That's my colleague will like that one. Dijon 
Bordeaux nil 2 um, Monaco nim 2-2, Strasbourg Rennes 0-2, PSG gets back to winning ways 4-0. And then we have um, games Tuesday and Wednesday to finish out the round, which I find, this is the weird thing in France, Lille Saint-Étienne, uh, Montpellier Lyon first of all, and then Lille Saint-Étienne and Nice Marseille. So those are actually quite some big games, I have to say. Uh, then, uh, so the table, Rennes at the moment leads it with nine points, uh, three out of three, but Lyon still has to play, and Lyon has been in really good form. PSG, uh, six, thanks to a good uh, goal difference. Unfortunately, Mbappé and um, Cavani are injured, and I think Mbappé is a little bit um, uh, more dicey, and probably that will put the nail in the coffin that Neymar has to stay, but let's see. Uh, nice also six points, but the two games, Angers six, then Brest, Saint-Étienne, uh, Reims, Bordeaux, Metz, Nantes, Toulouse, four points each, Lille only three points, but also only two games, Amiens uh, has three points, uh, I think they started with three draws, that's correct, no, it cannot be, with minus one, but how do they, ah, how do they get three points, they have a win and two losses, uh, Strasbourg two points, Montpellier, Marseille with one out of two games, Nîmes, Monaco with one out of three games, and Dijon is winless. To La Liga we go. Uh, started out with Sevilla getting another win at Granada. Um, kind of expected, I would say, Levante beats Villarreal uh, in sort of a local derby without the big boy from Valencia. Osasuna Eibar, nil nil. Then Real Madrid, Real Valladolid, another result that you really cannot uh, fathom. I mean, Real Madrid was the better team, but did not play all the great. They got the lead, but Valladolid did equalize. So there you go. Celta Vigo had, starts with two home games, one nil over Valencia and getting Getafe, uh, one, one against Bilbao. So those are two um, really, relatively big results. Alaves, Espanol, I saw a little bit of that, nil-nil, I really didn't like it, Alaves played in blue and white, and uh, Espanol in the dark green jerseys with the white pants, it looked weird. Real Sociedad beats Mallorca 1-0 away from home, Atletico Madrid, uh, yeah, we were told that Atletico Madrid will be this attacking side, blah blah blah, they have two 1-0 wins. Uh, against the two uh, suburb teams, uh, Getafe and Leganes, so uh, that I thought was interesting, that this is the beginning program um more or less staying in the area and then the big one that was the other team that i was uh, really uh, thinking of wearing barcelona 5-2 over uh, betis was maybe a little bit of struggle but barcelona played overall well and really asserted themselves and i think barcelona will be one of those teams that will keep picking up points against uh lower level teams so that means in the standings we have sevilla and atleti with two perfect starts, six points out of two games. Real Madrid, Valladolid, Athletic uh, Club, uh, Real Sociedad, Alaves, and Osasuna with four points. So uh, for Osasuna, pretty good start. Uh, newly promoted side, I think they might stay in. Um, Barcelona, uh, three points. Levante, three points. Mallorca and Celta. And then we have... Of course, a bunch of teams with one point. Via Real, Granada, Eibar, Getafe, Valencia. That's a little bit of a surprise. Espanyol and then Leganes and the Arbetis still have to win. And I want to finish it up with Portugal because there was the huge clash. And I actually saw that one. I didn't mention in the video. I was watching it in parallel with uh, Fiorentino Napoli. The big clash between Benfica and Porto, where uh, Benfica actually had the bad of the game, but then Porto scores a free goal and really controls it well. Uh, yes, Benfica is coming, but you know, they don't have Joao Felice any, any, anymore. They had, they were struggling and Musa Marega should have made it 2-0, uh, like midway through the first half. He was clear on goal, uh, didn't manage, but then a little bit later he gets the second goal. Uh, and Porto gets the huge win. Uh, if we look for other results, Boavista is a team that, uh, kind of bigger 1-1 one, one only at home. Uh, Sporting wins 3-1 at Portimonense and Braga, Gil Vicente 1-1. Those are uh, results I want to um, underline. After three rounds, Sporting uh, Club uh, leads with seven points and Family Sao <laughs> is... I never heard, heard about that team. Uh, also seven points, Benfica and Porto 
are uh, with six points each. Of course, Porto now one against Benfica. That's a big one. And Boavista with five. Braga with four. So you have the big boys all on top. I think Imaresh is kind of low. That's the uh, one that I would expect to be higher up there. Well, that was my run through the leaks. Pretty big video. Hope you enjoyed it. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you did. Drop a comment below to tell me what you think about these uh, games and where do you think the leaks are going. I think a lot of it looks it's a little bit like last year. Then was a wrench thrown in uh, some, some September, October. Um, the leaks that have already played at least three games, they already look a lot like last season. In many ways, at least on the top. But we'll see where it will go. Again, give me a thumbs up if you like this video, subscribe to my channel if you want to see more videos like these on my jersey reviews, collection videos, whatever. I talk a lot about soccer on my channel. And yeah, I will talk to you soon. Bye. Hey there. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, here are some videos and playlists that would be of interest to you too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel as it will keep you updated with all things that are rotating in my soccer universe. With that, I wish you a wonderful day. Bye.